Hey guys, we're ready for some more chords. Remember when we're doing chords, the very first book we went to was not the book that we're using in our class, but the alternate materials that are in the three ring binder. In the three ring binder, we learned the chords A, E, and D. In the book, we learned some other ones, some G and G7, C, D7, all that other stuff. Um, and so we're ready to learn some minor chords. We call chords based on what how much space there are between the pitches of the chord remember chords have more than one pitch playing at the same time and so we've learned a major and if we just have the letter a we're always going to assume it's major if there's a small letter m next to it that's how we know it's minor all right so if you're looking in the binder you can see the chord charts for a minor so first finger first fret on the second string second and third fingers in the second fret on the third and fourth strings. Remember, because this is an A chord, we are not going to play that sixth string. So you can hear how that sounds vastly different than that A major chord, right? So it, it sounds different. First finger, first fret, second string, second and third finger in the second fret on the third and fourth string, not playing the sixth string. A minor. All right, the next chord we're going to learn is E minor. If I just take away my first finger and hop my second and third fingers in the second fret, both of them, to the fourth and fifth string, this is E minor. Remember E major and E minor, right? Remember that all of these chord fingerings we have are suggestions. When we're playing individual notes in each fret, in first position, your finger number has to match the number of the fret. All right, that's that's the rule. With chords, though, it does not matter. And you should become really um, flexible with your fingering for chords and comfortable doing things different ways. So sometimes there will be people who will play with their first and second finger with their second and third. Not as many people play with their um, third and fourth finger, but if that's the way you want to do it, I'm not going to say anything about it. The third chord we're going to learn is D minor. And I'm not going to lie, this one's a little bit acrobatic. First finger, first fret, first string, second finger, second fret on the third string, and then the third finger in the third fret on the second string. Now you'll notice that I'm using my pinky here, mostly because um, I have short fingers for a musician, um, but you can make sure you got it. Remember, we're not gonna play the fifth or the sixth string, so we're gonna start from four down, and we're gonna get that D minor sound. Remember, you can check all of your chords to make sure that you have your fingers in the optimal split spaces by um, by listening to each string in the chord individually. Can you hear them all with good tone? All the fretted strings sound like open strings. If that's the case, then you're doing well and you're not accidentally, you know, dampening another string. Okay, now there are lots of songs that we can take a look at playing in the binder. Um, some of them you may not know, and that's okay. Remember, um, we also have G and C, the ones that we've learned in the books. And so we finally get to the part where there are songs you may want to try. Um, these are the songs that most kids really, really like. And so uh, make sure you're taking a look at them. Remember, in our um, additional material, sometimes they will tell you about a capo. Um, I'm pretty sure that out of all three of the guitars that are at my house, uh, my son, who lives in the basement, has taken my capo and is using it somewhere else. I will have to make a video where I can show you. Capos are awesome. You don't necessarily need them. They're telling you where it is because when you listen to the original recording, they're going to play everything with the capo at the first fret. All right? But you can see that... Um, some of the other things that I've noticed when you're playing some of these songs is that um, some of you don't realize that when you're playing the chords, you're playing the beat. And so right now, before we get crazy with different strumming patterns, you've got to strum once on each beat. And that beat is that steady and drilling pulse. So if you take a look at Mad World, you're going to do a lot of E, ma e minor, A major, G major, 
D major, and then that's it. So if you're not familiar with this song, um, I, I will put a link so that you can hear it, um, but most kids are. So if we just look at the first, here's the intro, it just goes back and forth between E minor and A major, back to E minor. And then A major, this is a crappy key for me to sing in. All around me are familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces, bright and early for their daily races, going nowhere, going nowhere. Remember that when you're looking at the verse structure, um, the, the pattern of the harmony, that harmonic progression, is going to be the same for the verses. There is a pre-chorus that is really very similar, and then when you get to the chorus, it's just this. Mad world. Mad world. And you just repeat that just a billion times. All right, so take a look at Mad World. See if you can play it. Like I said, lots of kids are really familiar with this song, and it's one that they like to work with. After you've got the chord progression in your fingers by playing once on each beat, then you could take some time and experiment with different kinds of, of strumming patterns or even picking patterns to make this work. But you got to get the chords in your hands in the first place. So good luck.